calipers toast on the F-150 driver side. I think it's due to the uh, vacuum booster. I get the correct name, but um, we've been having a problem when we're locking it up. I'll explain. So that's what it looks like. It's the rubber boot around that piston is broken, so I figured I'd just get new ones. I did a new brake hose line on a front um, right. I mean, sorry, front left uh, driver side and gonna do a new rotor. The rotor, I'll show you the rotor. It was toast. Brakes were worn down all the way to metal. Um, and they're, they were new brakes, but the vacuum pump is not working. So the brakes are staying engaged. So got a new caliper installed, uh, new pads. Also, I did a new um, brake line and a new bolt back there. So, just have to clean up and um, bleed the brakes. So, this is the back of the other rotor, completely scraped up by the brake pad going metal to metal. see this was the pad on the back so this is definitely due to my um i think my vacuum pump when i was looking online these were pretty much new um when i had to uh change the rotor and bleed it before but it looks like the main cause is that vacuum pump but i had to replace all that and some people said the line was their cause of their um front brake locking up uh staying locked um but that completely ruined my caliper my brakes so um i just decided to change all that change this out and i believe the, the pump is somewhere back there yeah i can see it so i'm gonna be replacing that pump as soon as it comes in in a few days What's up YouTube? Uh, I'm doing the vacuum pump uh, that fails on the 2011 to 2012 F-150. So it came with a brand new line. So I'm replacing this whole line. So one comes off the uh, where the throttle body is. And you have this sensor here that needs to come off. And this connection right here that actually goes to the vacuum pump. So behind your uh, driver side tire, front driver side tire, um, behind this felt here, I just pulled it out and it has one of those tabs. Uh, there's the pump. It seems fairly newer, but I'm going to replace it just to be safe. Um, I was having an issue with my front driver's brake. So this whole thing has to come out and I believe it has two 13s at the bottom. So I unhook this hose, it goes here all the way down to the uh, um, that vacuum pump and I pulled this out, I broke the plastic by mistake but hopefully the newer one comes with one of these clips and now I'm going to pop the center out. So I'm gonna unclip the sensor. And I think this is, it's like one of those plastic clips. I'm just gonna pull it out, pull out the sensor. It's in like a grommet. There we go. You can hear the air from the vacuum. Unhook this. Oh, actually, I think I just unhooked this thing right here. This is the old piece with the sensor still attached. I got to take that out. We'll just... And this is the new piece here. 
So I heard it's good to replace this because it comes with a bunch of check valves that don't allow the air to go backwards in the system um, from the pump, which you do not want. So these uh, kits, they come with the pump and they come with the um, tubing. Here's my new pump. I'll unwrap that um, after I get this in. Now we have the new vacuum hoses in. Last thing is to do is to pull these um, pins out to let the clamp set. And I plugged in the sensor in. Luckily it came with the new plastic clip. And here is a hose that goes to the brake booster. And I have to plug this little guy back in. Bam. So that looks good. Got to put that clamp down. And now it's time to change the pump after I do that. Set. Set it and forget it. So I'm taking the headlights out. There's three tens you got to take out, two on the top and one over here. Pull from this corner here, whatever you can get fingers in. I wiggle a little bit out and in and it's going to pop right out. So headlight popped right out. Now we can see the pump clearly. I'm just going to leave mine on the side. You can remove the bulbs and take the whole headlight down. I'm just going to leave it right there and try to work carefully. So we have two 13 millimeter bolts on the other side to get it out. And we have to, oh, this right here. But you just push on this clip and pull. So that, that's out now. And let's see, there's an electrical connection right here. slid right out right here and here I can get to it pull it apart okay this plug just pulls apart you just pry your fingernail in there and pull opposite ends and it comes out pretty easy uh, yeah this pump doesn't look too old it looks newer and I believe the guy said he replaced it but it's not acting good you know um sometimes i'll get that caliper locking up so i'm gonna replace it to be safe all right here we go okay this is the old part we have to reuse the bracket um i heard they don't sell them with the bracket anymore and this is the new pump we have to put in the bracket it has these Things we're gonna have to insert it's like bushing looking things and I believe we only use three of them so the big ones gonna go in the middle and two big ones are in the middle and this outer side is gonna get a uh, smaller one and nothing on the right side of it so this will be blank which it is so that one's blank. So I'm gonna try to get this out, out of the bracket. I believe is this this one T30. I'm gonna spray it down. Hopefully it doesn't give me any problems. Let that sit on there for a little bit. Okay, on a new pump. You put this small one here on the same side as this nipple here. Then you put the big one in the middle and you leave this one blank. And on the opposite side, you put another big uh, one. bushing. Let's make sure they're in there seated. I'll make sure. 
before I put it in. Getting the bracket out was tough. Um, the bolt right here that goes in here was um, tough. I had to, um, yeah, torch it. Then I ended up cutting it and drilling it. So it was a lot. I'm gonna still try to reuse this. Hopefully it works. So we lucked out. The hardware actually came with this um, piece that I cut. So I cut off this piece, which I need for the bolt. And it came with it. So I know they know that that bolt gets rusted and you might have to cut it and destroy it to get it off, which I did. So that fits in there. Um, the big one goes in here goes right in the middle so we're gonna do that now so now we have it in one bush in here so have that in with anti seize got some anti seize on these guys that go bolt to the frame of the truck I think we're ready to install so I put the connection on and it came with the new um, clip here you just slide it in the back this slides right on the back I don't know I think that's the farther it goes and you clip it onto the original um, the original so I actually had it backwards just slides all the way down like this and it clicks right in to the original bracket like that all right i'm gonna do the two 13s on the bottom and put the headlight back in and we should be all set so we got the two 13s over here screw down with anti seize nice and secure got the pump in here now i need to put this vacuum line back Over here hiding and I think it just pushes right on and you hear it yep. click like that very satisfying click so before I put back in the headlight I'm gonna start it up and see what it does so it seems to be running good um, I heard it filling up it sound like a compressor going off filling up air since I let all the air out the lines um, but yeah, I heard, I heard it filled up and I'm going to test out the brakes and take it around the block. For, first thought, the brake pedal feels a lot more firm than it ever did. Um, I never felt it this firm even when I bought the truck. Um, I asked a guy like, hey, um, the brake pedal soft, is that normal? And he was like, yeah, that's normal. But um, no, I guess it wasn't. The brake pedal feels more like a normal car where it has some give back. So that's good because I'm going to be towing to the Poconos next week.